It's Ravenhawk6910 reporting once again from my living room floor where I've just within the past week or so set up this loop of Lionel Fast Track just so I can run the trains here in the living room and not have to worry about going into the rather hot train room. Uh, layout construction unfortunately has fallen behind once again so I needed a fix really bad for running my models, so it was time to go the old-fashioned route and do this. Which, to be honest, that's okay. It works out just fine. But uh, I'm not really going to spend too much time talking about this because it's not too much. It's just a loop of track. I've got my ZW over there powering it, and I'm using my Lionel TMCC remote as normal. And whenever I want to run my MTH stuff, I just swap this out for the MTH DCS remote commander. So everything works out fine. I'm still able to run trains, so I'm not going to complain too much. There's not really much to complain about, to be honest. But I did want to take a minute and talk to you about three of the cars that are on this train, because they are brand new cars, at least to me anyways, that I picked up from a friend of mine, Ed Painter, and uh, I will show you those cars right now. So the three new cars are right here towards the rear end of the train, and the first one is this. This is an MTH Premier Line CSX Spring Hill Express steel coil car. And uh, it's an older Premier Line model, but it's still pretty nice considering its age. And uh, like all MTH Premier Line steel coil cars, if you take the hood off, there is a load of steel coils under there, which is really, really cool. It's something that they didn't have to add, but I'm glad they did. It's nice to be able to have that feature, so that way you can have loads in the cars, as well as loads that you can use on different parts of your layout if you chose to do that. Now, the second car is another older Premier Line car, and it is a CSX 8,000 gallon or beer can tank car. And this is, again, a very, very nice car considering its age, and it's an older Premier Line car, so it's not as detailed as, say, a modern Premier car, but it's still really nice. And the last car is a little bit different. This is a Rail King car, and it is a Conrail double door, plug door box car. And uh, normally I would not buy Rail King stuff because I don't typically model 027 that much. However, I did decide to go ahead and get this car from Ed. Uh, some of you may remember if you watched one of my very early blog videos when I first started doing O scale, I actually had one of these cars. It was from the MTH Railroaders Club, but I gave that car away to a friend of mine's child for Christmas one year because he needed a car for his set, and he ended up getting a lot more of enjoyment out of it than I was at the time. So it worked out well for both of us. But even though this car is considered 027, it still looks pretty good mixed in with scale stuff. So as you can see, it's mixed in with the tank car and then behind it is some of my Masabi ore cars. And it looks like it fits in just fine. And at first glance, you wouldn't really know it was 027 unless you were just looking very closely. 
and I like the paint scheme on it. I'm a fan of Conrail, so I decided to get it. Now, the doors tend to get stuck a little bit. I haven't been fidgeting with them too much because I really don't want to risk breaking them. So, it's a bit of a bummer, but I do like it nonetheless. And hey, while we're on the subject of freight cars, here's a car that I actually forgot to talk about. I've had this one for a while now, but for whatever reason, I just never brought it up in any of my videos. This is a K-Line aluminum tank car. I don't know what how many gallons it is. I haven't looked at the box in a while. But... I found this at Memory Station, the small train store in Watkinsville, Georgia, several months ago, and I liked it because it was undecorated. And, you know, I don't have a whole lot of undecorated pieces of rolling stock, and to be honest, this would look very good with some of Lionel's pilot locomotives that they've been putting out in the past few years, like, for example, the pilot Pennsylvania Railroad S2 steam turbine that I've currently got in layaway at Legacy Station, but more on that in another video. This tank car itself is very, very nice. It's all aluminum construction, which is very nice. You don't see a whole lot of aluminum-made cars these days. I know there are reasons for that. Some like them, some don't like them. I personally like aluminum cars because they feel more realistic. And while, yes, it does drive the price up a little bit, this was a used car, so that really didn't affect that too much. So for a $25 car, that's pretty nice. And speaking of cool items, here's a cool item that I've been getting a lot of enjoyment out of since it came. The Lionel Vision Line Norfolk Southern Gen Set Switcher. And since I've been running it after restoring it, it really has got me thinking, what is Lionel going to do next for the Vision Line? We've already got the GG1, the big boy, the CC2, the Centipede, the 21010, the Jeevos, the Gen Sets, and some other items. But it really has me wondering what they've got up their sleeve next for another Vision Line model. And if we do find out at the fall TCA show this year if they're going to make the Vision Line model for next year, what would you guys want it to be? I'm not really sure what I would like personally. Maybe another modern diesel locomotive of some sort or even a steam engine. You know, anything is possible with the Vision Line. And even though my GG1 had a few hiccups, I have been getting a lot of enjoyment out of it recently, and I am looking forward to seeing what they do next. I actually would like to see more sound-equipped cars like the, uh, uh, what are they, the reefers and the tank cars, and even some of the ones like the uh, more recently released 40-foot box cars that they made, even though those technically aren't Vision Line items, sound cars are still pretty nice. But as far as locomotives go, I would really like to see either a modern diesel or another steam engine of some sort, as long as it wasn't a super huge one, like the Big Boy or the Allegheny or something huge like that, you know. I know some people, when they think of the Vision Line, they think big engines. But I think if Lionel did more smaller engines for the Vision Line, like they did with this Gen Set, then I think they would have a, an, a much bigger customer base for a smaller item because more people could operate it and more people could afford it. So, you know, that's just my opinion for what it's worth, but what do you guys think? Post down in the comments section and let's get some discussion going on this. What would you like to see for the next Lionel Vision Line product if they announce one at the fall show this year? So that's really all I wanted to talk about today, guys. There's not really too much going on. I've been doing a lot of overtime at work to uh, help get my pre-orders paid down for this year because there is a lot of new stuff coming. And I've also been trying to get my S2 out of layaway before I go to the uh, Wilson County Fairground again to the train museum at Fiddler's Grove this August. So things to look forward to in the future is definitely that. Um, I'm still working on the ES44 review. I really need to get that done. And I've also got a few other cards up my sleeve that I'm working on at the moment, but more details on that later. But for now, I will let you guys go, and I will see you guys next time. This is Ravenhawk6910, signing off.